Hi guys, it's Elisa, and I'm here with another breakup advice video. This one was requested. Um, I was just at the beach for two days with my best friend, so I wasn't on YouTube at all. I came back and I had two requests, <laughs> which is like better than last week when I only would get like one. But my videos are improving a little bit, and I did get two requests. I'm going to cover one of them right now. Um, and it's literally the most generic question, but it does deserve a video because, I mean, if someone needs help, that's what I'm here for. So, um, the topic is I can't stop thinking about my ex. What do I do? Um, and honestly, this topic is super, super, it's like not really a, f there's not a factual answer. There's not like a set thing that you can do. It's just based off of theories and like feelings and just things that are just unsure, you know? So you can't really like take what I say and use it to like knock it out because it's not exactly gonna help it kind of happens in time it happens over steps it happens over progress so um but I can tell you what I've done and what I'm doing and how it's helping me so um like I said there's no exact way to stop thinking about an ex there's no pill that you can take there's no show that you can watch no podcast you can download like you have to let it take its course and that's the point of this whole video is let it take its course everything happens over a duration of its own course and um especially if you just got out of this relationship it's normal to keep thinking about them all the time but if it's been like a good chunk of time and you're still thinking about them there could be a problem but then again um you need to think about it this way love and moving on they don't know timing humans put times on everything we put times on how long we bake things we put times on when we should meet someone for lunch we put times on what time our classes start or on when our appointments are like everything we do is on time feelings don't know time like literally humans invented humans never invented time we invented a clock we invented measuring time but like time is something that cannot really be measured when it comes to feelings like feelings literally run on their own they don't know time at all this is time this is feelings they don't go together time is based off of like what the clock says and like literally how many seconds or minutes or hours pass or days or months or years and then feelings are literally based off of i don't know your emotions your chemical brain activity your i don't know anything like they don't they don't go together it's like mayonnaise and i don't know what doesn't go peanut butter for example even though people keep commenting on facebook "Ooh, mayonnaise on reese's peanut butter cups are so good like i don't know why people are saying that it's not like a thing stop because i've unfriended like six people because they've said that but um they don't go together so step number one Accept the fact that feelings don't have time. You don't put time on feelings. If someone says, move on, get over him, you say, no, let me, like, do my course. Let let this thing take its course. It's going to take its time. And some for some humans, it takes longer than others. And that's why I think the no contact rule is stupid. I think any amount of a time span is stupid because this doesn't know time at all. My hair appointment knows time in my whatever my college knows time but my heart doesn't know time so um as soon as you admit that you'll be good the second thing this this one is um some people are like argumentative about this one and I'm kind of on the fence with it too but distracting yourself some people think that if you constantly distract yourself you're not teaching yourself to deal with the problem you're teaching yourself to hide from it and honestly that's true but it helps um ever since the breakup my breakup I've taken up a lot of extracurricular activities like I've taken up a new sport a new church painting classes I made a lot of new friends that I constantly hang out with new hobbies new interests like and I do those things weekly like every single day I do I'm signed up for something every day that way I can keep myself busy and it helps a lot but if I ever have a day where I'm not doing anything no work no school no babysitting, no sports, no nothing planned with anyone, no dates, no family time, nothing. It's a really, really hard day because I'm left alone to think, just to think and to like wallow in my thoughts and just, and I don't like that. I don't like having time to think. And that's because ever since the breakup, I've been training myself to stay busy. Don't think about it. And that's what people say, distract yourself. But then other people are like, no, don't distract yourself. Deal with it head on. You have to have a good balance. You have to have activities to keep you busy, but you also need time 
to cope and to stress and to decompress yourself. Like for me, I've been going overboard with the whole staying busy thing. I literally have given myself something to do every day of the week. If I don't have something going on on Thursday, I'll Google things to do on Thursday and I'll, I'll do it. Like I need to stay busy all the time. That's just the kind of person that I've become since the breakup. But you need to give yourself maybe a few days a week, start off slow. Like maybe give yourself four days a week, then three, then two, then one, where you just have a day to yourself to think and to like let yourself grieve, like listen to your sad songs. Like you have to purge, you have to get those feelings out. Otherwise they're just gonna bottle themselves up. And I've talked about that in my video, which, which is called To the Guys Who Brush Off the Breakup. It says to the guys, but girls can watch it too. It talks about um, bottling up your feelings and how they pile up inside of you. It's an actual psychological fact. So um, distract yourself, but also give yourself time to be honest with yourself instead of hiding from the truth. Because you shouldn't stay in your house all day, every day, and just be sad and cry. But you also shouldn't tell, like, lie to yourself and make yourself think that you're fine and moved on when you still tear up when you hear his name or you still, like, whatever. You know what I mean? That glare really scared me on my, like, I don't know, on how I point right here. I don't know. I didn't know what that was, but, um, like, you have to let yourself have that good balance. So stay busy, but also every now and then devote some time to yourself to where you're allowed to feel and you're allowed to grieve. Um, I'm still teaching myself that advice. Like, <laughs> I did not have anything planned for tomorrow, so I picked up a shift and I'm babysitting. So it's one of those things. Stay busy, but let yourself feel. Um, that's pretty much the only points that I have, but now I can just like talk freely. It's normal to think about, oh, I do have another point. It's normal to think about your ex. I promise you, it's so normal. And this is something that I wish I had paper for because this is a super visual thing. But okay, so you break up with your ex or like I'll break up. There is a definite time span, let's say from the breakup to here, for example, but it's not months or weeks or it's just time. Like time goes by where you 100% have to think about your ex all the time. No matter what you do, no matter what drugs you take or what pills you swallow, what drinks you drink, what activities you sign up for, what people you date, there is a set time where no matter what mental behavior you try to change, you know, people say, oh, you can control your thoughts, you can fix this, you can fix that, like, just change the way you think. There's a set time where you can't do that. There is a set time where you 1 million percent have to think about your ex 24-7, and you cannot change that. Okay, so watch my little figure right here. I need a third hand for this. But from this point here and forward, there is a time where you can, where you still think about your ex all the time, but the only difference from here to here versus from here to here is that you can control it here. Right here, you can't control it. What was my motion right here? You cannot control this. You are going to think about them 24-7. You are going to be sad. For boys, it's shorter. Boys have to think about their ex maybe, let's say, a few months. For example, I hate using time, but boys don't think about their exes as much as girls do. So boys have a few months span. And maybe um, girls have multiple months and then where you just, you can't distract yourself, you know, no matter how many activities you do. I know I keep saying that, but I'm trying to get that point in your head. But then one day, it's not like an instant day, but it's maybe like over a variety of days or like a few weeks. From that point on, you kind of get into the state where you still think about them, like I said, but this time you can control it. You can tell your brain hey, think about something else, and then you'll be like, okay, and then you do it. You can think about your ex if you want to, but you're choosing not to. You didn't have a choice before, but now you do. So determine what phase you're in. Are you in the phase where you still have to think about them? Because for me, I'm still in that phase because we share mutual friends, and like our lives were so intertwined, it's hard to pull them apart from each other, and so I still have to think about my ex because I'm we still live in the same town, like, it's, I can't, like, live without him yet, even though we've been broken up for a few months now, or are you in the phase where you're thinking about him just because it brings you comfort, or it brings you stability, or because you're bored, or you're not putting yourself back out there, like, you have to make a choice, there literally is a point where you can't control it, 
it's a mental thing, like, your brain is one million percent gonna do it, and there's a point where your brain is saying, okay, I'm ready when you are, you know, I'll let go whenever you do, so determine which one you're in, that's super visual, and I really wish I had paper for that, but I think my hands did well enough, so once you determine which one you're in, that's good, if you're in the first one, right here, where I'm kind of at, I'm kind of in the transition right now, though, like, I've been feeling a lot better the past few, I say weeks, maybe, I don't know, but if you're in the first one, just know that it's normal. You're not alone. Heartbreak is so normal. You have, I think, I think I read six significant heartbreaks before the age of 30. I think it was three to six. And a human normally has 40 relationships when they die. Like, you take about 40 relationships to the grave. I'm not saying, like, boyfriend, girlfriend, but I just mean relationships with people. Like me, I've had one boyfriend, but I've had at least maybe five or six relationships where we weren't official, but we were still, like, a thing, so just know that it's normal, you're not the only one, um, if you're still thinking about your ex, this does not mean that you're meant to be with them, it just means that you're just taking your time slower than other people, and honestly, like, there's nothing wrong with that, and sometimes it is the case where they are the person that you're meant to be with, and you guys do end up back to each other down the road if that's the case let me know because i would love to hear a story like that because those are the cutest stories where you like they part ways and they end up coming back but um sometimes it's meant to be which is like i would say five percent of the time and the other 95 percent of the time you're just a normal kid normal person just running its course and you you haven't let go yet but you're still working on it um all i can say is just keep yourself busy let yourself grieve um what was the first point that I started off with? I, I had like three points. The second one was busy and let yourself grieve. And then the third one was um, my whole visual about determining which phase you're in. I forgot what the first one was, but you can just rewind and watch it again. But bottom line, it's normal. I think that was my first point is that it's normal. Yeah, but um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just all about how you present it. You know, don't like make yourself look desperate. Don't act on your actions eventually you know if you hit a certain point there does come a time where you should do something about it either with yourself like go see a therapist like a physical not physical a mental therapist like a psychologist or contact your ex or write him a letter send him a text stop by and tell him like look I can't stop thinking about you and I don't know why like can you please talk to me so I can get over you or something like that or that yeah that's just it there comes a point where you need to do something about it eventually so that's just my advice i know this video was kind of scatterbrained um this is my first time recording it and i'm pretty satisfied with it so far so i'm just gonna post this one but that's my advice so if y'all have any more requests which i have one more which i'm gonna do tomorrow um i'd love to hear it all right y'all have a good night thank you so much for watching bye